Alright, so hello everybody, this is Haven again, and I'm doing part number 7, I believe, in the Blender for Beginners uh, series. I'm going to show you a few little um, tools that we use, a couple of little uh, tricks or hints or tips when it comes to meshing. Our uh, next uh, video will be on uh, some more intricate tools that we use but I wanted to show you first something about normals and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just create a simple sphere well maybe I'll just do a simple cube instead make it much easier and I'm gonna put it into edit mode and I'm gonna come into my end panel my properties panel so I'll hit N on my keyboard and I'm going to look down into the Mesh Display section and click on this box here under the Normals heading. This highlighted face is on this cube, so I'm going to click that one. And this is going to display to me the normals on the faces. And when I cam into the box, you can see that the normals come out the front of the box. And again, like I said before, they point in the direction that the face is actually facing. So, and also, like I said, they come out the beginning, that's or out the front of it. We all know that mesh is invisible on the inside. So I'm going to turn on back face culling. And back face culling basically makes the um, sides of the mesh that are invisible appear invisible, kind of the way that we would see them in Second Life. So let me go ahead and I'm going to open this up for a second. And we can see that the inside of the box is invisible. And even though we can see the normals, they're actually coming out the front. So you'll see if I cam here from the side view that that comes out the front, not the back of it. Okay, so now sometimes we can actually have a piece of mesh where the faces are invisible. We bring it into Second Life more like, hey, wait a minute, why can't I see my faces? That's because they're flipped around the wrong direction, which means that if you extruded or maybe if you inverted things accidentally, um, such, as, such as scaling this so small and then up in the other direction. Let me show you how that works real quick. So if I hit S for scale, and I push it in and it gets so small, when I go to the other side, it actually gets turned around. And now the outside normals are inside and the inside ones are outside. So do you see how that these are all uh, backwards now? So sometimes that can happen quite by accident, just by simply scaling it too far and not really realizing what you've done. So when you happen to have faces, that are backwards and you bring them to that sound you can't see them it's real easy you can turn on your back face calling that helps display your normals that definitely helps to see which way they're coming out of and then in the tab for shading and UVs look for the normals section and flip direction it will flip direction on any faces that you have selected so right now I have these three faces selected, right? Well, actually, yeah, those three faces selected. And I'm going to flip direction. And now those are actually inside out. Those are the wrong way. And so I would come here and choose flip direction. So let me go ahead and show you something else now here. We're going to take this face and this face and we'll flip the direction on them. And now with selecting all of it, we're going to use W and subdivide and give it a few cuts. Okay, so now you can see that we have quite a few inside and quite a few outside, all the different. <laughs> uh, uh, there's this other tool called Recalculate. And depending on the majority of the faces and the normals and which way they're facing, Blender will try to make an estimated guess at which way you want the normals. Because you're telling it, recalculate it. I've got some of them wrong. Figure it out for me. And so it does its best to do exactly that. So let me click on recalculate. 
and you'll see how it picks those all for me. Now they're all facing the right direction. Usually if you have a higher number of correct ones than incorrect ones, it will do really good on the re recalculation. So that's how you work with normals. Now some of you just saw me rip open this box. And so that's another little tool that I want to tell you about. In edit mode, if I select this vertex here, and I hit the letter V on my keyboard, so V, I can rip that vertex away. Let me turn this off for a second. I can rip that vertex away from where it was. And what I did for the two of them was I just selected them both, and I hit V, and I pulled that away. So you can kind of rip that open if you want to. Another thing that you can do is hold Alt and then press V. And, whoops, it's actually not going to let me do it. Let's see. So, um, Alt and V. There we go. Didn't let me do it on the other one because the other one was already ripped. But when you do Alt and V, you can rip this side up and faces will be um, inserted or created here to keep that closed. And so that's sometimes kind of fun to play with. You can rip this and fill it um, in either direction, up like this or out. And it all depends on what side of the mesh you actually have the mouse hovering. So let me go back again. These two with my mouse here, doing Alt V and pulling it up. That's what I have. Let me go back again. This time I'm going to do Alt V with my mouse on this side. And you can see I can pull that down. So that's a pretty handy tool for a couple of different things. Um, making odd shapes and such. And you could just keep doing that over and over and over again if you wanted to. So that's kind of looking like a little bit of an air duct there, isn't it? So anyways, that's a fun tool. Now another one that I wanted to show you was has to do with the extrusions. Um, and you know what? Actually, I'm going to show you a much better example of that. This lesson, I'm just kind of winging it, just thinking of things off the top of my head that I think you might be interested in. So I'm going to use a mesh torus. Now, when you have a torus inside of Second Life, you have what's called a hole, and you can change the size of the holes opening and closing, you know, how big this section is. Um, and we can actually do that here inside of Blender as well. If all of our tours is selected and we hit S for scale, the whole thing gets bigger, right? It just all scales up, or it all scales down. But what if we wanted not this to be scaled up any bigger, but we wanted these rings to be scaled larger or thinner? Well, if we do Alt plus S, we can scale them down and scale them up this way. Instead of scaling the actual size of the torus, we're just scaling the thickness of it. And that's kind of like what you've got with the hole inside of Second Life in the Objects tab where you can torture your prims. So Alt and S does that. Another scaling tool that we have, let me delete this. I'm going to bring in a plane. And you'll recognize me using the um, knife tool here. So I'm going to put it in edit mode and hit K for knife. And I'm going to make just like a stop sign shape. For, well, for those of you that are in Mer America, I don't know what other countries have this kind of shape for a stop sign. Okay, but there we go. And I will hit enter to finalize that. Now you can see that I have this um, hole in here. And maybe I made this, but I wasn't really that great. Maybe I wanted to make a circle, right? I'm not really all that great at making a circle with my knife tool. 
So I'm just going to make a copy of it for now. So we have what's called Alt-Shift-S. And if I click on just this edge here, let me go around and click it, and I do Alt-Shift-S, watch what happens when I start to pull my mouse away. Not a whole lot, right? It kind of means that that's already as round as it's going to get. But if I come over on this one, and let me scooch over the right way, I'm going to do a border selection here to select these. And I will use W for subdivide. And I could even do W for subdivide just for fun. And now when I hit Alt-Shift-S and I pull out, do you see how that rounds that up? makes a nice circle for me and that's because I have enough vertices the same thing was actually done on this one it just didn't have enough vertices to make it more round so the same hole that was cut just manipulating it a little bit gives us this over that so another tool that we have and I'll show you on this one is to make this filled in I think I mentioned it on the first one Simply having a loop of edges and vertices and hitting the F key will fill that in for us. So we have that to play with and that's uh, nice and easy to do. Another thing that we have is what I've just done here and that's to actually duplicate what you've got going on. So I can select even just this inner part, press shift, press and hold shift tap the D key and I can duplicate that so now I didn't take it from there I just made a copy of it and now I have one here to work with if I want to you could also do this with just a vertice shift D and you can use it with X Y and Z as well so X see I can only move it on the X or Y I can only move it on the Y Z you wouldn't see of course because I'm going from the top view right now. So here I have just a vertice, and I can hit E for extrude, E for extrude, and I can actually extrude a shape if I want to. Keep going around and around and coming up here. And you'll see that this is really hard to line up, right? So what you can do is you can click on these two vertices, hit F, and now that fills it in with an edge between those two. And now if I select all of these and hit F again, it fills that in with a face. So just to be a little more clear about the duplicates, let me go into front view here and... If I have a cube, shift plus D and hitting the X key and then maybe three enter, you can see that I duplicated it and I've moved it on the X axis by three units. So from here to here is one, to here is two, to here is three. If this were more centered, so let's give this a little bit of a center there. So now I do Shift, D, X, 3, Enter. You can see a little better. The origin started here, and when I duplicated it and I said 3, I moved the origin 1, 2, 3 Blender units. And you can see that by these darker uh, lines on the grid up there. And you can do that in all different um, directions. It doesn't matter. You can even do here duplicate it so shift D and then shift Y and now you can duplicate it on the X and the Y but or the X and the Z I'm sorry but not on the Y so I eliminated the Y axis just like I eliminate it when it comes to um, moving and grabbing things all right so let me delete everything that I have here and let me show you another tool that I like. So I'm going to center my cursor, 
Shift A to add a mesh. Let's go with cylinder. And I'm going to, I think I'll keep all the settings as they are. I'll go into object mode and control R to add a few edge loops just because I can. And let me, let me go ahead and do this a little bit. And we'll talk about how I'm actually performing this in a moment, in a in the next video. How the tool that I'm using does that. Um, we won't get into all of it right now. We'll just do a little at a time. Okay, so actually, I didn't really make too much of anything. I just kind of wanted to, that to be less bulky. Let me move that up and that up. Oops. Okay, so now I'm going to select all of this. And I'm going to go into face select mode. And in face select mode, if I tap on my space bar, I don't know if anybody's ever done it, but if you tap on your space bar, you get this search. And right now you can see I poke face in there, but if you ever want a tool and you're not quite sure um, how to find it on your interface, you can start typing stuff in here and see what comes up. So if you type in poke, you can see that the Alt P is actually the shortcut key for it, or you can uh, select it from right here. So I'm going to click there, and you see not much, nothing really happened except I seem to get more geometry. Well, that's where you come over here into the Operators panel, and you see Poke Offset. Well, you can take this, and you can start playing with it. And it begins to poke those faces out. So you can have a really weird-looking thing or a fun thing, or you can make a vase or, you know, something that you want to. This weighted mean, this is um, a little bit uh, detailed as far as uh, where the poke actually happens. Weighted mean it pretty much just happens evenly all over, but you can play with that if you get into something with a lot more detail. So this is kind of cool. Um, if you hit Alt, let me go back for a second, Alt P, whoops, Alt P instead of Control P, you have this and um, Go ahead and try it with the offset relative. And so with the offset relative, it's a little smoother of an effect, I think. Do you see that? Let me go ahead and turn this back on. So this is a little bit of a smoother effect. I really like that a lot. And you'll notice that it didn't do the triangle fan up here at the top of the cylinder. It only works on quads because it cuts the quad in half. And so you have that. After you do something like this, you can even come into the Tools uh, tab and look for the Deform section and then click on the Smooth Vertice. And that can help smooth it out too. And that's best used when, let's say you did your poke and then you went on to do another tool so you lost all your settings down here um, for the poke. And then you get a few steps down the road and you're thinking, oh, I might have liked that to be a little less pokey. <laughs> and so you can just select it all and come in here and use the Smooth Vertex. And Smooth Vertex itself does have other factors that you can play around with it. You can tell it how smooth to make it um, or how smooth not to make it just by adjusting this here. You can click on your repeats and it will do it a certain number of times like instead of clicking smooth vertex up here 10 times you can come down here and you can constantly click on that to get different effects. So that's kind of fun to use as well. 
you can get all kinds of crazy things going on. A lot of times people will be working with um, their shortcut keys and they'll hit Alt P on accident. There's other times where you use the P key like Control P when you want to parent something and so sometimes people will do that on an object and they'll end up getting some poked faces somewhere and they won't realize why does my mesh look like that and so that's something to check for to make sure that you didn't use um, the poke tool. So let's go ahead and let's go on to another little uh, fun and handy uh, tool that we can use. And that is called the inset. And inset, inset works really great when you use it uh, along with something like extrude. So just keeping my mouse off to the side here, I hit the I on my keyboard. And now I can pull away, or push forward, sorry, push forward. And you can see now that top face is being inset into the, um, the, the top of it. And you're getting these um, edges on there. You can then use this with like E and Z and extract this or extrude this down, giving you a box effect. So this is pretty cool. If you go back, and let's say we've got all of this selected, the whole box, and you do I and you push your mouse in, not all of the boxes are going to start getting like that. You're not going to get the kind of inset that you want. And that's because this side and this side, they're fighting over which way that edge is going to go. So your best bet is to uh, do this, you know, something like I for inset. And then you can start putting in numbers like 0.5. And then you could choose these two sides and do I inset 0.5 on your number pad. So this helps you get, and uh, using it with numbers helps you get the same kind of um, inset all the way around. So that's kind of fun. You can even hit E um, for, uh, well, I don't know if I would do it that way or not, but you can even take all of these and you can delete your faces so you have a hole there with each one of them and now you've got kind of a cube that you can start seeing through you can also use your modifier or other tools on this and we'll talk about modifiers in the um, one of the next lessons coming up pretty quickly but you can see that just these simple little tools really give you a lot to work with. And yeah, I think we'll call it enough for one lesson or one tutorial. So your homework is going to be to pull in one of your shapes and try using some of these tools on there and see if you can make something with them. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't. Um, Pass the link out, you know, so that other people can check out the tutorials if they like them as well. And we will see you next time.